मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट द चैप्टर प्रेशर ऑन प्लेन सर्फेसिस सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस डिफाइन द रिजल्टेंट थर्स्ट ऑन अ प्लेन सर्फेस सो लेट अस कंसिडर अ प्लेन सर्फेस एस विच इज इन कॉन्टेक्ट विद अ लिक्विड let us divide this plane surface into a number of elementary areas then on each of these elementary areas a pressure is exerted which acts normal to the surface so these thrusts on the different elements of the plane surface they form a system of like parallel forces so these like parallel forces they can be compounded into a single force to get the resultant thrust of the liquid on this plane surface s the magnitude of the resultant thrust that is given by the sum of the thrusts on this various elements of the plane surface so the sum of the thrusts on the different elements of the surface that is called the resultant thrust or we can say whole pressure on the plane surface now next there is a theorem for the resultant thrust on a given plane surface if a plane surface is immersed in a heavy homogeneous liquid homogeneous liquid means which have the same density throughout then we are to prove that the resultant thrust of the liquid on the surface is equal to the product of area of the surface into pressure at its centroid now in order to prove this first of all let us consider the case when the atmospheric pressure is neglected let us consider this is a plane surface having the area s this plane area is immersed in a heavy homogeneous liquid and let us take the density of this liquid is rho let us divide this area s into a number of elementary areas we have denoted them by alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and so on let us take z1 is the depth of this elementary area below the free surface of liquid z2 is the depth of elementary area alpha 2 below the free surface of liquid so in general we have taken z i is the depth below the free surface of the elementary area alpha i this point is the center of gravity of the plane area s and let us take z bar this is the depth of this center of gravity of the surface below the free surface this line is the free surface now we are considering the case when the atmospheric pressure is neglected now let us find the pressure at a point whose depth is z1 below the free surface we have taken this point this is free surface of the liquid this depth is z1 so at this point if we find the pressure that is given by the formula density of the liquid into acceleration due to gravity into this depth z1 so this will become rho into g into z1 therefore the thrust on the small element having the area alpha 1 that is given by pressure into area pressure is rho into g into z1 into the area is alpha 1 similarly we can find the thrust on the other elements of the surface s so if we consider the 
element having the area alpha 2 then the thrust on this element of area alpha 2 is given by rho into g into z2 into alpha 2 and containing like this in general on the element area element alpha i the thrust is given by rho into g into z i into alpha i now the resulting thrust on the surface of area s that is given by the algebraic sum of thrust on all these area elements so it is given by summation rho into g into alpha i into z i this rho and g that can be taken out of the summation they are independent of i so the thrust becomes rho into g into summation alpha i z i now let us find the value of summation alpha i z i to find the value of this term let us apply the formula for depth of center of gravity of the plane surface now this plane surface is divided into a number of small elementary areas alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and so on and their depth from the free surface is z1 z2 z3 and so on so the depth of this point which is the center of gravity of this plane area s that is given by alpha 1 into z1 plus alpha 2 into z2 and so on divided by the total area total area means alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 and so on so from here we can uh, obtain the expression by cross multiplying we get z bar into summation alpha i is equal to this is summation alpha i z i now summation alpha i this is the sum of all the elementary areas into which s is divided so summation alpha i is the total area of the plane surface that we have taken as s so we have obtained z bar into s is equal to summation alpha i z i now we can substitute this value of summation alpha i z i in the equation one so we get the resultant thrust on the plane surface s that is given by rho into g into z bar into s now rho into g into z bar this is the pressure at the center of gravity of the surface and s s is the area of given plane surface thus we have proved that the resultant thrust on the plane surface that is given by the product of pressure at the center of gravity of the surface and area of the surface so and this was the case when the atmospheric pressure was neglected now let us consider the second case when the atmospheric pressure is taken into account in this case again let us find the thrust on each of the elementary area that we have considered in the first case so the thrust on the element of area alpha 1 in this case the value of pressure is pi plus rho g z1 here this pi that denotes the atmospheric pressure alpha 1 is the elementary area so the thrust on element of area alpha 1 that is given by pi plus rho g z1 multiplied with area alpha 1 in the same way thrust on the element of area alpha 2 that is given by pi plus rho g z2 multiplied with the elementary area alpha 2 so continuing like this we can find the resultant thrust on the given plane area s that is given by the sum of the thrust on these elementary areas so adding all these thrusts we get the resultant thrust on the surface s which is given by pi into alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 and so on plus rho g into z1 alpha 1 plus z2 alpha 2 and so on now alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 and so on this part is the total area of the plane surface that we have taken as s 
and the expression summation z i alpha i that we have proved in the first case is z bar into s. So the resultant thrust on s that is given by pi into s plus rho into g into z bar into s. Now if we consider h is the height of the effective surface above the free surface then we can find the value of atmospheric pressure which is given by rho into g into h. So we can substitute this value of atmospheric pressure in this equation. So we get the resultant thrust on the plane surface S is equal to rho into g into h into s plus rho g z bar into s. So from this expression we can take rho g s common. Inside we have h plus z bar. So this gives us the resultant thrust on the given plane surface in the case when atmospheric pressure is taken into account.